Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make. I'm going to do this by sharing with you how much we pocketed last month in April from selling put, covered calls, as well as using leap options and collecting a few dividends. This will show you some of the option trading strategies you can use for monthly income in your account. Hello everyone and welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not meant to be investment advice of any sort. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information that I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for you on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. Here you see a list of every option trade we did last month in April. The red box are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. We'll discuss the trades we did in our Leap Disney position. I'll also share with you all the details of our covered call position in Realty Income ticker symbol O. And we'll also talk through several awesome trades we did in AT&T ticker symbol T. At the bottom in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we pocketed $13,109. In the orange box, you see that trading commissions cost us $80.50. And in the green box at the bottom, you see that we pocketed $537.90 in dividends from Cypress One, Realty Income, and WP Carry. In all, we pocketed $13,566 from selling put and covered call options, as well as collecting some dividends. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 23.6% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. If you calculate the return on the $85,833 margin requirement, it equates to a 204% annualized return on margin. The first group of trades I want to talk through is an AT&T ticker symbol T. Here you see all the trades we've done in AT&T since June of last year, which is almost a year ago. Notice towards the bottom in the blue and red rectangles, under the far left column, that we purchased these third Friday of April, $30 put options back on April 16th. If you look at the far right column of these two rectangles, you see that we paid 17 cents per share to close those options out. On that same day, you see that at the very bottom line in the purple rectangle, under sale date, we sold the next third Friday of the month, May $30 put options. If you look under the received from sale column, towards the right, you see that we were paid 77 cents per share for selling those May options. One of the reasons why I wanted to share this trade with you is because it shows that even though we trade in monthly options, sometimes you only need to hold them for a week to get a month's worth of premium. Here's what the daily and weekly charts looked like on April 16th when we sold those third Friday of May $30 put options. On the left chart, the daily chart, you can see why we felt comfortable selling this put option. Because you can see on the right where the arrow is at, AT&T had finally broke out above both the red 200 and green 50 moving average on the daily chart. Also notice down the volume section in the white box, there had been nice buying pressure over the previous month or so in AT&T. Looking over at the weekly chart, you see that AT&T had now broke out above the green 50 moving average. And again, down the volume section, over the previous several months, there had been really nice buying pressure in AT&T. So we felt really confident selling these $30 put options at this spot. Well, what happened? As you can see here, over the next several days, AT&T drifted higher until on the 22nd, it gapped up to $31.50. At that point, the option we had sold didn't have much time value left in it. So as you can see in the purple box at the far right of the box, we bought the option back for 16 cents per share. So the net we put into our pocket was 61 cents per share. We were in this trade for six days. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 124% non-leveraged cash on cash return. If you're curious what the return on margin was, the margin requirement was $3,941. If you annualize that return on margin, it equates to a 942% annualized return on margin. So one tip here that I wanna make sure to point out to you is that I know some of you like to trade on weekly options. This trade here was a monthly option. As you can see, if the stock moves in your direction and the option loses value really fast, by selling a monthly put option, we're able to collect almost the entire month's premium in less than a week. You can always close these monthly options out early if they don't have much time value left in them. That will allow you to pocket really nice premium, then close the trade out early and put that money back to work in a brand new position. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. 
The second trade I want to share with you from last month shows the power of selling covered call options and stocks have either been assigned to you because of puts you've been selling or because you bought shares outright. Here are the details on this covered call position and the trade that we did. Here you see the trade we did in Realty Income ticker symbol O. As you can see in the red rectangle, on April 14th, we bought to close the April $65 call option. Simultaneously, we sold to open the third Friday of June $67.50 call option. Please notice that we rolled the short strike price of our covered call option up by $2.50. Notice that we only pocketed 10 cents per share when we did this. But the biggest factor I want to point out to you is that we rolled our short covered call option strike price up by $2.50. Well, why did we do that? Here you see the daily and weekly chart of realty income. Notice in the left chart, the daily chart, that over the previous several months, realty income had been in a nice uptrend. The high for the current wave was higher than the high for the previous wave, and the low for the current wave was higher than the low for the previous wave. Also notice down the volume section on the daily chart that there had been tremendous buying pressure in realty income over the past month or so. Over in the weekly chart, things look pretty similar. There had been nice buying pressure over the past month and a half, and the stock was finally pulling away from the green 50 and red 200 moving average and had now reached new highs of $66 per share. I mentioned that we only got 10 cents per share for this. That, of course, is not that good of a return. However, we were able to roll our short strike price up by $2.50. So if realty income does continue to go up and it gets caught away from us, in essence, we put $2.50 plus that 10 cents per share into our pocket. Oh, by the way, the next day after we did this trade on April 15th, as a bonus, we received the realty income's monthly dividend. So as you can see here, for the 300 shares that we own, we received $70.50. That equates to 23 and a half cents per share for the month of April. Remember that Realty Income pays a monthly dividend, so as long as we are in this covered call position, we will continue to receive that month's dividend. Well, what has happened since we rolled this covered call strike price up in Realty Income? At the base of the white arrow is where we rolled that short call option up from the April 65 strike price to the June 67 and a half strike price. Realty Income did as we expected and went up all the way to $70 per share, but has now retraced back down to right at our short strike price of 67 and a half. If it continues to look strong like it is right now, then again, in June, we'll see if we can roll that $67.50 call option up to $70 per share. What will our return be if Realty Income is eventually called away from us at this higher $67.50 strike price? Well, this month, we were able to move that strike price up by that $2.50, and we pocketed $0.10 cents per share from the net covered call option trades that we did. We also pocketed $0.23.5 cents per share from the dividend. So in all, we have received benefit in the amount of $2.83 per share for the two months time frame from April to June. If you annualize that return for the 65 potential days that we might be in this covered call position, and remembering that our purchase price was $65 per share, it equates to a 24.5% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. Who says that doing covered calls can't be profitable? As you can see here, they absolutely can be profitable, especially if you're trading in a dividend paying stock and paying attention to the trends of the stock that you're trading covered calls in. Also, if the stock is trending up, why not consider rolling the short strike price up while still pocketing a little cash on the spread of the roll so you can receive the benefit if the stock is eventually caught away from you at that higher strike price. The final trading position I want to share with you is to give you an update on our Disney Leap option position. Here you see our current Disney position. Starting up top in the white rectangle, you see that we own the January 2023 110 call option. In the yellow rectangle just below that, you see that we have sold the June 175 put option that expires next month. In the purple rectangle, you see that we sold a nearer term leap call option that expires in January of next year. And finally, the green box at the bottom, you see that we sold a call option that expires next month on the third Friday of June at the 155 strike price. There's a long story that goes along with this position. If you'd like to follow along with this trade, then check out our previous monthly option trading cash flow videos because I give an update on this position almost every single month. But here's the short story behind this position. Back in March of last year, when the market crashed super hard, we bought a leap call option in Disney, which we have since rolled up and out to this January 2023 110 call option. When we did that, we locked in some profits as well as we were able to recoup all the cash this position had cost us. 
Now, everything we do from here on out, as long as the trade stays profitable, will be 100% profit because we are no longer out of pocket any cash at all in this position. When we bought that call option back in January of last year, we also sold the January 2022 150 call option, which you see in the purple rectangle. Shortly thereafter, we started selling a second near-term call option to lower our cost basis. Disney performed exactly like we had hoped it would, but as you can see where the white arrow is, slowly increasing in price from March of 2020 until November. However, where you see the two yellow arrows at those two spots in November and again in December, this position began to go up too fast for us. Remember, we are along one leap call option and short two call options. So we are naked one call option. Now we expected Disney to come back down to try and fill those gaps. And although it did try in February, it immediately bounced right back up. So we didn't have a chance to roll that short near term call option up. Over the next several months, we kept waiting for it to come down and it just hasn't done that. As you can see at the purple arrow, it's kind of just gone sideways over the past three months. However, we do not want to stay short one uncovered call option. So as you can see in the blue rectangle, on February 26th, we sold the third Friday of April, 175 put option and received $4.87 per share. On April 6th, as you can see in the red rectangle, we rolled that 175 put option out from the third Friday of April to the third Friday of June. It cost us 35 cents to close out the April put option and we received another $4.28 per share for selling the June 175 put option. So here you see the four trades that we did in Disney as one order on April 6th. In the red rectangle up top, we bought to close the April 150 call option and notice that in the blue rectangle, we sold to open the third Friday of June 155 call option. So we're slowly rolling the short strike price of that near term call option up as we roll it out. And if we need to, we're using the premium that we're receiving by selling those put options to help pay for rolling that call option up. Being an option trader allows us to be very creative in our trades. If a trade moves against us, there are many ways we can use options to manipulate our positions legally and still put cash into our pocket. We don't know what the future is going to be for Disney stock price, but our plan is to continue rolling this naked call option up to the point where it expires worthless. Here on this trade, if you do the math, we're able to roll the April 150 call option up and out to June 155 call option. And we simply rolled the April 175 put option out to June. So we got $5 per share added to the strike price. And we also pocketed 50 cents per share minus commission. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades, similar to the three we spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on when is the right time to sell put options to maximize your cash flow and returns, Check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, When Should You Sell Put Options? Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.